One. Yep. We're live. Finally. Finally. Hey everyone. Finally we are live. We were able to to uh, figure out uh, the issue with, with the technology, and uh, right now we're here. Sorry, we're almost an hour late, but uh, I hope uh, we can serve you by you know giving you the best uh, content about confidence that we can give you. Right. So welcome to the How Much Do You Really Need series, episode seven, entitled How Much Confidence Do You Really Need. So what we will do is we will wait for a couple of minutes so that others can jump in the call. Before we start, so while waiting, why don't you comment where you are watching from and we'll give you a shout out. We will also be sharing this uh, broadcast link to the, the pages that we have so that, you know, we'll have more people joining in. Is that okay, Doreen? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So the link should appear now in my, my page. Okay. So we're just waiting, guys, for those of you who just uh, joined. We're just waiting for, for a couple of people to come in so that uh, we can start the, the actual uh, webinar. And again, we are sorry for being an hour, almost an hour late. Okay. I'm share this. Hey guys, we are, we are just uh, setting up <laughs> the the share so that you know more people can can you know um, jump in the call. We'll start in a few minutes, probably two or three minutes. And uh, while while you are waiting, why don't you comment where you are watching from, and we'll try to give you a shout out. Okay. So hi, Kel. Thank you for, for joining us. My wife is watching as well. Hey, Cal. I hope you're doing great. We'll talk later. <laughs> Okay, we'll start in, in a minute. Uh, if you're ready in a minute, Doreen? Sure. Okay. Almost done sharing and tagging people.
So everyone, for those of you of you who just uh, jump in the call, uh, comment where you are watching from, and we'll try to give a shout out. We're just waiting for a couple of people to jump in so that we can start the the, the webinar. Again, you are in the webinar entitled "How Much Confidence Do You Really Need?" It's the seventh episode of the "How Much Do You Really Need?" series. Okay, so Lenin is saying hi. Hi, Lenin. Hi, Lenin. Oh, wow. Someone is, Kel is really excited. Before we even start, he is already excited about this topic. So I hope Kel will deliver, right? Okay, so are we ready, Doreen? Let's get, let's go. Yes, sure. All right. Yeah. Okay, so good morning, Canada. Magandang gabi, Pilipinas. Unfortunately, it will be magandang umaga, Pilipinas, when we finish. But uh, welcome, everyone, to the seventh episode of the How Much Do You Really Need series, where we talk about topics that are of interest to us millennials, so we know how much of it do we really need and we can use in our lives. I'm your host, Colas Angeles, and I'm here with Doreen Cooper, hashtag super with Cooper. So ha say hi to them, Doreen. Hi, guys. So I would Thanks like to thank, me. yes. So I would like to thank all of you for setting aside the time to attend the show. And that goes for you too, Doreen. For those who will be watching this webinar through the replay, I would like to welcome you as well. A little bit of a background about this series. I thought about this series because I myself have been wondering how much do I really need in the different aspects of my life, such as financial, love, relationship, faith, diet, career, and so on. Hopefully, this series can help us measure if it's even possible how much we need in the different aspects of our life because only us can define it. And I'm hoping with the help of our experts, get expert guests, it will be a lot more easier for us to do it. So for today's episode, it is entitled, How Much Confidence Do You Really Need? So before we start, is everyone ready and excited about this? Hit us with your most confident yes in the comments box below, and uh, we'll start as soon as we get one yes. So Lenin is watching from Australia. Hey, Lenin, it's a good evening there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we got one yes. So by the way, if you stay until the end of the webinar, I have a very special offer for you regarding the beta program that I am launching called Unlock You. I will give you a code that which will slash off 80% of the pro program's full launch price. So if you stay until the end of the webinar, you can join my beta for you for just 20% of the full launch price if you have the code. So I, I also, Doreen, I think, has a surprise for us. And right, Doreen, for, for, for the book that you are writing, right? And, and that, that's for later, right? That, that's a surprise. Anyway, OK. <laughs> So I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce myself, right? I'm Kulas Angeles, it's Angeles in the Philippines, and I'm a certified professional coach and an energy leadership index master practitioner, and I'm a, a millennial career and life coach. I am the host of Millennials Moving Forward and Up group and uh, of this show. So I help millennials who are passive life strivers being held back by fear, procrastination, and timidity, unlock their best selves and pursue goals that they've been putting on hold so that they can live the life that they really want while feeling fulfilled and successful. If you want to learn more about what I do and the services that I offer, kindly visit my website. It's moveforwardandop.com. Outside coaching, I'm married and now a father of a girl and a boy. I am a musician, an IT professional, a migrant, and a millennial, just like everyone here. So enough about me. Let's talk about our guests. We have here our guest, Doreen. So a little bit of a background, how I knew Doreen. I met Doreen when we were in the university. Hannah, our vocalist, was her classmate, I think, in high school, right? That's correct. And uh, she introduced our band to Doreen because we, we she, Doreen needed a, a song, right? And uh, we recorded a song for her for one of her projects. So that was around, I think, 13 years ago, <laughs> right? And, uh, so imagine, that makes us all sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> So Doreen, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us what you do and why you are doing it. All right. What do I do? Uh, again, Kulas, thank you so much for having me on the show. And uh, hello again to all of you who have joined us. As you know, my name is Doreen Cooper. I am a professional speaker, 
uh, on the learning facilitator in case you need a differentiation between the two. As a learning facilitator, I do a lot of training. You can check out some of my topics on my website, www.doreencooper.net. As a professional speaker, I do different things like keynote speeches. I host events also. I also write a lot. I blog and I have a book coming out. It's what Kulas mentioned. The title of my book is Hashtag Adulting, Five Secrets to Embracing Change in Life and Career. And my, my blog and my blog, which is a video blog, are both available to be viewed on my website as well. That's www.doreencooper.net. Why do I do the things that I do? I, I think my, I think for, for many of us, our greatest calling in life is really to help people. And I think that the things that I do are ways for me to best, well, to help people in the best way I know how. I, I believe that uh, I have had the privilege of being able to upskill myself and help people have a more, or to help people have a more empowered life by means of improving their skills, maybe changing some self-beliefs and increasing their knowledge. So that's why I do what I do. And I have had the privilege of working with many different companies and individuals and some nonprofit organizations as well along the way. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's Doreen for you. She she is mainly, mostly on on the on the stage, right? She's always the one at the front. That's why I invited her. You know, because for you to be able to you know um be a training facilitator, be a vlogger, you have to be at the front, be confident with what you do, right, Doreen? That's true. That's true. yeah. So that's why that's why I invited her because she is the epitome of confidence for me. Okay. It's so right. of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Of course. All right. So let's get this party started then. Yeah. Okay. All Sounds right. Good. So a lot of us millennials are confident on social media, but not in real life, right? I myself included. Right? But I must admit that from time to time, I experience, you know, lacking confidence in the different things that I do. There were times when I feel I had the best idea in the room, but I opted not to talk about it because I feel it's not good enough. There were times that I feel that I can lead a group, but because there is someone more charismatic in the group or there is someone who I feel is better, more smart, I decided just to be a follower. There were times when I wanted to speak in front of the stage, but since I'm confident, but since I'm not confident with my English skills, I just shut up and stay at the back. So there are a lot of times I could have been, but I chose not to because I have no confidence in my, in my skills and myself in general. I would have loved to get that confidence back back then, but I don't think I had enough in me. So Doreen, having said all of this, I'm now gonna ask you the hot question for today. How much confidence do we really need? The floor is yours, my friend. Okay, how much confidence do you really need? I don't think there is um, a hard and fast rule in terms of how much confidence we need in in life i mean i think it kind of changes depending on the situation like say for example you drive a car i mean at first you know it's kind of hard because driving a car is a skill but and okay so imagine it's your first time to actually sit behind the wheel and drive the car now it's difficult to to do something if you're not skilled at it it's a learn you know it's a learning process just like many other things in life but it is very dangerous if you have a lot of confidence without so much skill so at the start it's good to have a bit of confidence but maybe not too much confidence that would make you think you know what it doesn't matter if i don't have much skill I can do this anyway, and you drive off and, you know, you hit a pole or another car, or God forbid, a person, right? So I think, as I mentioned, it's a case-to-case -case basis. 
but I, 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 I think, I strongly believe that it's good to have a bit of confidence to try out new things. And along the way, you know, especially if you're building the skill, the more that you learn about how to do things, I think the, the confidence also naturally evolves and increases with, with us gaining more skills and knowledge. Of course, you have to be very careful with becoming overconfident. And in the blog that I, the, the, the blog episode I released a few days ago, I talked about overconfidence because overconfidence also, you know, really, it, it, there's nothing good about it. I mean, there's this book that I was reading on overconfidence. I mean, these are people who, who project, you know, that they, they're like, they're totally in control of things or they're out there and, you know, everything is like going the way that they want it to or they're they're extremely competitive of others and there are many different manifestations of overconfidence but unfortunately you know when you have too much confidence and it crosses over to overconfidence you turn people off it's difficult to work with you people feel that you're always taking their spot or their space basically in different social situations and you also can get yourself into trouble because when you have too much confidence in yourself, what happens is you're not very realistic with the things that you can or can't do. So I think it's good to have a bit of confidence to test things out, improve your knowledge, improve your skills, but never become overconfident because that's, that's very dangerous territory, I would have to say. And maybe because I work with so many people in the field that I'm in. I've met people who have very, very little self-confidence. And I love working with those people because I love being able to encourage them. And at the same time, I've worked with people who are way too confident in themselves. I mean, I, I talk about an example in the book. Somebody I know has the capacity to brag about five different unrelated things within the span of 30 minutes or even less. Wow. Extensively, by the way. Yeah. And and this person turns off a lot of people because of this person's manner. I'm not going to tell you about who the person is or if this person is a man or a woman. But the point here is that, again, self, too much self-confidence is also dangerous territory. So I think it's good to become confident in what we can or can't do. But I think it's also good to keep our, our head straight and just remind ourselves that there must, you know, for as much as we know something or we can do something, there are many other things that we don't know or can't do. And I think that will keep our feet on the ground instead of allowing ourselves to get overinflated and just think of how amazing we, we already are and become overconfident. That's right. So I have a quick question, but before my question, um, I sure. would just like to give a shout out to Lloyd, Bazar, Vernie, Santelic, Cesc Bayo. Sydney Castillo, Sarah, Kring, Limpin, Vicente, welcome to the to the webinar. So if you guys have questions for me or Doreen, just, just post it in the comments box and we will try to answer as much as we can. Right. So going back to my question, Doreen, uh, how will you know that you are of overconfident? Most people probably don't know they are, right? But how will you know yeah. personally if you are becoming an overconfident person? Right. Um I think that the best gauge is really to look at our intentions when it comes to certain things. Is your intention to, to show off? Is your intention to appear better than other people? I think because, you know, there's this saying that we judge other people based on their actions and we, we judge ourselves based on our intentions. And again, that's, that's a saying. And that's why it it's for me it's it's dangerous territory to look at somebody and to you know like especially when you only spend a little time with a person to really come across and judge a person's actions i mean maybe the person is having a bad day and the person just needed to to you know like say something to pick him or herself up but i think that what's most important is that we focus on ourselves and that we we really ask ourselves like for the different things that we do or say what was our intention was our intention to help other people was it to better the lives of other people 
was our intention to to give our best. I mean, at the end of the day, they say that we really should just be competing with ourselves. And I, I totally agree with that because you, you know how much you put into something when you compete with yourself as opposed yeah. to looking at somebody else and trying to, you know, you know the, the whole my horse is bigger than your horse scenario because <laughs> somebody is always going to, to be better or be prettier or be, I don't know, like more in your eyes more amazing than you are and when you start comparing yourself with other people also that's another tendency that could cost that could tempt you to to show off or be overconfident so again go back to yourself and ask yourself why am i doing this why am i saying this and you'll have your answer because if really it's to help others to better the lives of others then awesome otherwise you may be again just uh, just saying things to make yourself appear better in the eyes of others and i think it's also good to to seek feedback i mean feedback is something that well it's it's a threefold process we give it at times we receive it at times but we also need to seek it at times and i think it's good to really actively pursue feedback to seek it and to try to also gain an understanding of how others perceive us because again as i mentioned it's good to focus on ourselves instead of judging the actions of others but let's be realistic that we also work in different groups and as we work with different groups we also have to try to understand how others perceive us in the different in the different capacities that they interact with us yeah. i mean you may not realize it, but maybe you're not a very self-reflective person, and therefore you don't know that others are already perceiving you as overconfident. Yeah. And maybe if you seek feedback, that's also a chance for you to give your piece or to, to share where you're coming from, and then other people could also help guide you along the, the path that could further improve you as a person. Yeah, and I love getting feedback because uh, because yeah. um you know feedbacks are, are are helpful if you you view it constructively right but some some yeah. pers- some people might be you know offended by by feedback and but but you know people feedback is something you can learn from much like failures right so if you are humble enough to accept feedback right you you, you are on your way to you know becoming a better version of yourself but you know, Kolas, reality is that a lot of people also don't know how to give feedback constructively. Oh, and I great. think that's the reason why a lot of people are also afraid to get feedback. It's because a lot of people use this as, as an opportunity to criticize other mm. people and to take them down or feel them bad about themselves. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, I, I sometimes do workshops on how to give feedback in a way that is friendly, that is helpful, and that is supportive. Because mm-hmm. I think that when we learn how to give feedback in a real supportive manner, in a way that really builds other people up, I think that it's one small step towards making the world a better place yeah. and to really helping empower people and really bringing out the best in them. That's right. That's right. I, I love it. So you, you are doing trainings for, for those type of things? Yes, I do. Wow. Wow. I do. Okay. It's, so, and, it's uh, a if... communication. Sorry. You were saying? If they want to attend those trainings, do you do it like on your page or do you do it on a on a professional, you know, uh, venue, something like that? Yeah, I, I usually do workshops like in mm-hmm. person. Um, if they are interested in learning more about that, they can actually send me an email at doreencooper.ph at gmail.com. I repeat yep. that's doreencooper.ph at gmail.com. Having said that, I understand that a lot of people might not be able to, to, I don't know, like book a workshop for whatever reason. And uh, so I guess it's probably a good idea for me to share some ideas as well on my blog, maybe yeah. in the coming months, because mm-hmm. I do have scripts for the next three months, I think, lined wow. up already. <laughs> yeah, I prepare in advance. It's it's yeah. hard when you don't. It's so difficult, especially because I do, I'm a solopreneur, which basically yeah. means I do everything on my own. Wow. And that starts with, you know, it's answering emails, creating content, 
putting the content out there, tweaking everything, dealing with clients. There, there's like, if there's such thing as, you know, the, the saying, walang forever. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to my tasks as a solopreneur, there's forever every yeah. single day. Yeah. So, uh, so going back, you know, to the topic, I'll, I'll create a blog on how to give, receive, and seek feedback in the coming months. I think I've, yeah. I've done a bit on it already in the past, and they can do my YouTube channel for that, or okay. my past videos on my Facebook page. But, uh, but yeah, I, I would be most happy to also redo another or reshoot another vlog episode on on giving feedback, giving, receiving, and seeking feedback. Yeah, that's a good title also, right? <laughs> Okay, so we, we have a couple of people ask, well, we have one person asking a question, but before that, I'm going to greet April uh, Bontano Bonto. Uh, welcome to the show. And uh, so Sydney here has a question. I'm not sure if you can see my sure. screen. So hi, Nick. Yeah, so he calls me Nick, but I'm not Nick. Okay, I'm Kulas. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But just want to stress out that overconfidence is also a way of protecting yourself against bullying. Any opinion about that? Mm. Okay. Thank you, Sydney, for the question. I think you, you bring up a good point. Is overconfidence a way of protecting yourself against bullying? I think that some people use it as a defense mechanism. Uh, but uh, again, as you mentioned, as you bring up, it's a way of protecting yourself. It's a defense mechanism. I think there are other ways as well. Uh, like, say, for example, Let's go back to the example that I gave you earlier on. Uh, this person whom I know, not not the kindest person that I, <laughs> I have to admit, this person is not the kindest person that I know, but you know, out, out of respect for the person, I never engage in in, I don't know, like a verbal, my horse is bigger than your host battle with this person. So yeah. anyway, I go back to this person who has the habit of bragging and just wanting to show that he slash she is better than everyone like this person it's very rare to hear kind words coming from this person for other people like seriously i'm so surprised at how negative this person is and also continues to you know like brag about this and this and that one time i was at a dinner function with this this person that you know I'm, I'm giving us an example and what happened was in the middle of the dinner in the middle of group conversation this person this just shut down my idea like out of nowhere wow. this person just interrupted me and went after what something that i was saying and i understood that you know that is that is an opportunity to to try to feel, you know, or show that you're bigger and that you know more. But I just, I think, I just personally think that approaching it that way is it's like a never ending. I don't know, like there are never ending consequences to that because if you approach it that way, the other person will also react negatively, and then you also react negatively, so on and so forth. So my suggestion, my my suggestion for those situations would be, which was similar to what I did that time, is to, to, to ask questions. Like, for example, you know, I said something and the person just straight up interrupted me and then said something else. And I asked the person follow-up questions like, why do you think so? Why would you say that? Mm -hmm. And because questions like that put the person in the position to have to share more about his or her ideas. And then you get to understand where the other person is coming from. And then you get an opportunity to, to say something like, I appreciate your ideas. The reason why I was sharing mine was, you know, then you get a chance to clarify or what have you. Now, I'm saying this, you know, I know that the question was about bullying. But I, I think as well that as we grow older, bullying can come in different forms. It can come in the form of people making fun of you. And again, I think that there are more constructive ways, more positive ways of responding to situations like that, um, such as, you know, like 
try to understand the other person, put yourself in the, the other person's shoes. In this case, the one that I gave you, I, I asked the person questions and then I clarified where I was coming from after I appreciated this person's idea. Because at the end of the day, I think that people bully people, people show you know too much confidence or whatever because we want to feel important we yeah. want to get recognized and some people just don't know how else to show it and so they show it that way and the question is you know do you want to make this person feel bad or do you want to maybe try to put yourself in the person's shoes and maybe help the other person create a deeper understanding in her, him or herself and also maybe help the person see a different perspective. You know, Kolas, just to give you another example, I I am working with some groups at the moment, and well, I won't I won't tell you much about those groups, uh, but there are some people that I'm working for in those certain groups, which make it very challenging for me to work with these people. These are people like some there, there was a person whom I really felt bullied by. If it's a question of bullying, I mean, this person, this person one time really put me on the spot and sort of ganged up against me and said different things in front of a group of people. And I, at the time, you know, I, I just, I, I sat down. I, I was there at the, the, the meeting. And I sat down and I, I was trying to listen to, to these people. And I just said, if you, if that's, if that's really what you believe, then go ahead. You know, I'm not going to stop you. But I, I knew back then that the reason why we, this, these people were ganging up against me was because of their own insecurities. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make you feel bad about that. I mean, if, if it makes you feel better to bully me, yeah. What ha whatever, but I know that I, I go out of this, this place with my dignity intact. And if you can't say the same for yourself, then I think it's a bigger reflection on you and a bigger problem for yourself than it is me having a problem with myself. And anyway, we fast forward. That, that incident happened three years ago. Fast forward to two months ago. This person called up a person with whom I was working and started to complain about me mm -hmm. and you know was complaining about me because of that incident that happened three years ago and I was just like what kind of person is this guy I mean not only did this guy really bully me during that incident now this person is escalating complaints about me wow. over something that they, that I uh, objectively speaking up to now I hold my ground that I I, I was never disrespectful I was never inappropriate and this person just for me, again, it's more a reflection on this person's insecurities more than mm -hmm. it is about me, really. It just so happened that at the time, I was the target. And mm -hmm. but you know what I found out? Because I, I, the, the person with whom this person escalated complaints about me, the person called me up because the person had to clarify the issue with me. Yeah. And so I was able to tell my side. And this person told me, you know what? I believe you. And... I was, I, I felt relieved, yes, I have to admit, but you know what, you know, something else that I realized was that, well, it came to me later on, this person who acted out against me, whom I felt bullied me, the person didn't just do it to me. And I was correct because about two weeks ago, I found out that this person has been doing the same thing to many other people and so many people have been complaining about them. Mm -hmm. So this brings me back to another point. You know, again, uh, we people bully, people become overconfident or show overconfidence because sometimes you know we want to show attention or we want to get attention, which is human nature, by the way. We want to seek relevance, we want to feel important, we want attention. You you can say no, 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 I don't want attention, but I think in your own small way, you still want attention. Maybe yeah. just not. In a bigger capacity maybe it's just from a few people who really matter to you and yeah. again that you, you know it, it changes from person to person and if a person really behaves consistently in a way that is overconfident that is loud that bullies chances are this person is also treating other people that way and there are also others who are complaining against that other person 
So you don't have to react with overconfidence. You can ask questions. You can put yourself in the other person's shoes. You can try to understand the other person better. Because I think at the end of the day, again, we all just want to feel important. And if the other person doesn't have the awareness that he or she needs to put him or herself in your shoes, then if you can do it for others, I think that's a wonderful thing in itself already. And it speaks highly of you as a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First of all, I love the composure, right? You, you didn't, you know, uh, had that altercation. You were professional and, and with, with that guy, right? And um, at the end of the day, what, what, uh, what uh, that story uh, is telling me is that um, you are confident with what you were thinking. That's why you, you didn't have to, you know, even make a case because at the end of the day, you're confident with what, what you have and what you are thinking, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I hope, Sydney, that answered your question. So probably on my end, when, when you get bullied, right? I, I think I was a bully when I was young too, right? I, I mean, all of probably all of us are. At some point, right? All of us, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure right? all of us so probably that's probably the, the best. The best way to to you know counter a bully is not by force, but you know by showing that you know you you are confident enough for for you not to be bullied. That now that that doesn't mean that you have to punch him in the face. You know, you knowing martial arts, right? It's just that you are confident with what you think, and if you know, and if you if if, if someone views your point as something that is not correct right you are able to accept those suggestions and you know be confident still with with those suggestions and what you will be doing in the in the, in the next phase of what you have you are about to do right yeah oh, okay. I agree. so yeah so doreen do you have uh some point some more points for for you know dealing with how much confidence do you really need Points in terms of dealing with how much, how, confidence how much confidence do you really need? I think I'd rather answer any questions that they might have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, guys, if you have more questions, just send it over. So, yeah, Sydney is saying that you answered her question. Awesome. I'm really yeah. happy that this is able to happen. Okay. By the yeah. way, guys, oh, I do have one quick point mm -hmm. uh, that I'd like to share with you. If you're familiar with Amy Cuddy's TED Talk video on fake it till you make it, I suggest that you focus on the part where she talks about body language and how power poses can help increase your confidence because not, not all of us are con actually, no one is confident 24 seven. Nobody, yeah. no one in the world. I can guarantee that based yeah. on the different people that I've worked with. I, I'm willing to bet nobody is confident 24 7. Yeah. but what do you do what do you do during those times when you're not confident in, in case you you haven't watched amy cuddy's ted talk yet on the topic what she says is because she's a social psychologist unless i'm mistaken and what she did was she did an experiment for her students in an m i think they're students from an mba class or something Basically, she teaches at one of the top universities in the United States. And what she did was she took a saliva sample of people who were part of the experiment and she divided them into two groups. So, okay, imagine you had like 100 respondents. 50 of, well, all of them had to submit saliva exam, uh, samples so that she could see what the baseline was in terms of how they were feeling confident at the moment. And then 50 of them, she had them do power poses for 20 minutes. Power poses. So, for example, what's a power pose? The Wonder Woman pose, where you hold your, your hips or your waist. Yeah, that's a power pose. Or you, you can put your hands behind your, your head for 20 minutes. You can stand with your feet apart. A power pose, as you may have figured out by now, is something that makes you look bigger. Because uh, in terms of how animals and humans act, people feel, people exemplify or use power poses when they feel confident. So according to Amy Cuddy, do a power pose for 20 minutes. And she, well, that, well, that's what she made these respondents do. Now for the other group, I think what she made them do was 
do poses where they feel sad or insecure. And that basically means making yourself smaller. Like you, you hold your neck, you, you cross your arms against your chest. And what happens in those situations is, oh, sorry, before I get to that. So she did, made them do that for 20 minutes. And what she did was she compared the results for each one or for each group. And what happened was she realized through this experiment that changing your behavior can also increase or decrease your confidence. Mm. So it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Some people think you have to feel confident to act confident. But Amy Cuddy says, according to her experiment, you can just do a power pose for 20 minutes and that will drastically increase your confidence and decrease your stress levels. And also, if you, well, don't do it to yourself, of course, but if you want to feel weaker or like a victim, then you can do like the kawawa poses yeah, for yeah. 20 minutes and that will also change your life drastically just in a negative manner. Now, having said that, there's also another lady, her name is Marissa Peer. And you may want to check this out as well. There was a time when she spoke at a convention. I think it was Entrepalooza or something. I forget. But it's basically her speech when she is wearing this sort of like a silver silk shirt. Now, mm -hmm. this lady, Marissa Peer, I love the work that she's done. She is, I think she's a psychologist, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And she says that the biggest problem that people have is they feel that they're not enough. And we all suffer from that. We have different manifestations. Some people become overachievers because when they keep achieving more, it makes them feel good about themselves. It makes them feel confident. But really what's happening there is at times, I'm not saying that this is what all overachievers do, but what happens, what happens is at that moment to sort of get a kick, you feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm enough or I'm good enough because I was able to achieve this. But it's sort of like a band-aid solution because until you realize that there's a deep problem, which is you feel that you're not enough and you realize that you are enough, regardless of who you are or what you are, then you're you're gonna you're gonna keep trying to go for band-aid solutions. Mm -hmm. The bullying example is another way that people feel or people try to show that they're enough, that they're powerful, that they're relevant. But again, that's just a manifestation of not feeling that you're enough. Sometimes it's, you know, it's different things. You can show that you're a badass. You can show that you're an overachiever. It could be many different things. Yeah. But the bottom line is these are just manifestations of a symptom that you don't feel enough. I mean, some people go through excessive cosmetic surgery. I'm not saying everyone, okay? Just <laughs> a few people. I know, I do know some of them. They undergo that because they feel that they're ugly, that they're not enough they need to undergo certain things in order to feel mm -hmm. that they're better but again this isn't the, the 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 general rule for all of the overachievers or all of the people who undergo cosmetic surgery these are just examples that sometimes people do these things in order to feel that they are enough but yeah. the thing is we are enough I mean, the person that you are should be more than enough and you should be able to get confidence or gain confidence in knowing that you are a wonderful person who is loved. There are many people who love you and that you matter to so many people. Mm -hmm. That's right. I love that. So you, you guys, you have two uh, people that you should be looking up to, right? Uh, Amy Cuddy and Marisa Peer. So I posted uh, the the links and the TED talk of Amy Cuddy about fake it till you make it. You know, in the coaching world, that that TEDx is really you know uh, a buzz word, right? For 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 most of the coaches that I know, right? They are, are always asking people to watch this, watch this if you want to gain confidence, blah blah blah, right? Yeah. So guys, if you have questions, just just post it in the post it in the comments box. So, while while we are waiting for your questions, is it okay, Doreen, for me to give them some tips, you know, on how to gain confidence? Yes, please okay. go right ahead. <laughs> yes, okay. So let's be clear that confidence and self esteem are not the same, right? Self self esteem refers to general feelings about yourself. 
Confidence refers to your belief and feeling that you can perform a task successfully. But the better you feel about yourself, though, the easier it becomes to build confidence for a specific task, right? So they go hand in hand, right? They are different, but they complement each other, right? So speaking of building confidence, I'll be giving you three tips on how to build your confidence. And hopefully once you've built your confidence, you'll be able to answer the question, how much confidence do I really need, right? So tip number one, study, train, and learn, right? Most people get their confidence from studying, training, and learning. Think of an exam. If you study well, meaning you are fully prepared and you didn't cram, that means you didn't study a day before the exam, you'll be oozing with confidence and most probably you will ace it, right? Knowing that you studied, trained, and learned well makes you feel calm. Preparation is key. The more prepared and knowledgeable you are, the more confident you will be. So the first tip, guys, is to gain confidence is to study, train, and learn. The second tip is practice, practice, practice. Practice doesn't make perfect, but practice makes progress. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just need to appreciate progress. Say if you are just learning the guitar, of course it will take you a while. It will take you a while to play your favorite song. But as you practice, you make progress. And as you make progress, you gain confidence. But do remember that practice is different from right practice. Right practice creates progress, meaning you don't practice what you already know. Otherwise, it becomes a rehearsal, right? So the second tip to gain confidence is write, practice, practice, practice. So the first two tips are actually doable and actionable, right? Somehow tangible, meaning you just have to do it and you'll see the results. But the third tip is probably the hardest as it deals with mindset. And mindset to be natural to you, it takes a lot of well, studying, training, learning, practice, and more importantly, belief. So the third tip is believe in yourself. Not believing in yourself makes you miss out a lot of things in your life, the career, the opportunities, the relationships. Without belief in yourself, you won't be living the life that you really want. It's okay not to be perfect. No one is. It's okay to try and fail. Succeeding will feel really good, but failing is not the end of the world. We are so afraid that other people will judge us with what we say and what we do when we could be worrying about nothing. So friend, to build, a co to build confidence, go out there, believe that you can do it. And trust me, each success can give you a positive reinforcement in life, but so are failures. That is if you start learning from it. So to summarize the three simple tips that you can gain, that, that, that you can use to gain confidence, study, train, and learn, right? Practice, 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 and lastly, believe in yourself. So I hope the, those steps will, will help you, you know, uh, just determine how much confidence do you really need for a specific task that you need. And I agree with Doreen that, you know, there is no one that will be 24 hour confident about himself. It will be a, you know, an up and down battle, right? But at the end of the day, if you really believe in yourself, and if you are open to suggestions, right, then confidence will be there. Okay? Okay, Doreen, so I have a few more questions for you. These are, these are my personal questions, right? So, uh, so guys, if you have questions for Doreen, just, just post it here and uh, I'll be reading, reading, uh, reading them, right? So Kel has a question, but uh, I, I'll ask the question first, right? Okay. Uh, so Doreen, you, you said that, you know, your confidence uh, somehow is really high, someone's, somehow it's really, you know, there at the bottom. So whenever you feel not confident, how, how do you overcome it? It depends on what I'm not feeling confident about. Okay. Like if, for example, I fail with something, and of course, when I fail at something, especially when it's a pretty big deal, like a certain example that I mentioned in my book, uh, I, I let myself grieve first. Okay. So oh, I do spend some time. I spend some time grieving if I lose at something that's a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, I. I'm not, I don't want to give you the example. You should read it in my book. Yeah, I'm yeah, just we're trying excited. To, to put it for, <laughs> I'm just trying to help put in perspective. Like, I don't know. Like, for example, maybe. I mean, thank God it hasn't happened to me yet. Mm -hmm. Actually, did one time. Okay, yeah, I can tell about this. 
there was one time wherein I lost a major client. Oh, okay. I felt so bad about it because there was a company that referred me to this client. They, they put me in as a consultant, a training consultant for this client, and they believed in me. And I, I honestly felt that I gave it my best. I really felt that I did. And for whatever reason, the client didn't like me. And I, I did spend some time grieving over that because what happened was a week after I found out about losing this client, something else, uh, something else major happened in my life, which is another failure. I mean, mm. you may think that I don't know what you consider failures. For me, what happened before that was the major failure, but the fact that I lost this client and somebody had trusted me enough and gave me this, this major client that they had, for me that, that even though I, I gave it my best for me, at, to me at a certain level, that was still some form of failure. So one thing on top of the other made me feel really, really bad. And I did spend some time grieving over that, I have to say. It took me a bunch of weeks to get over that. Because especially if you find out what happened before the, the thing with the client, you're going to understand why it took me some time okay. to, to get over that incident. Now, after I grieved, I it gets to a point, well, at least for me, it gets to a point where the grieving process, once you're done, it's like, okay, I'm tired of grieving. Now the question is, what do I do? Yeah. So I... I usually get to the point. So again, allow yourself time to grieve, especially for really big hiccups or failures, so to speak. And then once you, you know, get through, give yourself some time, maybe a week, I don't know, three days, depending on how big yeah. it is, a month if it's really major. And then once you're done, look at the situation. This is a bit of OD or organizational development, but, mm -hmm. you know, do it for yourself. Look at the situation, really analyze it. Where am I right now? That's point A. And then look at point B, where do I want to be? Point B is where you want to be and then to write down your action steps to take you from point A to point B. And I do this for my different workshops and work those action steps into your schedule because the only way that the action, well, the actions you take are going to be realistic is if you actually work them into your schedule. Now, how do I gain confidence for other things? That was your question, right? Like, how yeah. do I gain confidence? Okay. For other things, <clears throat> sometimes it really just helps to do self-talk. Like, for example, before I go into a meeting, I tell myself, you can do this. I mean, you, can, you know, just yeah. positive self-talk. Because mm -hmm. if you do negative self-talk, I really think you do yourself a disservice because it makes you doubt yourself more and it really, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't help you. Also, I think it's good to prepare for things. Definitely practice, you know, increases your confidence, but preparation and hard work, nothing beats that. Before entering or before going to work, what do you do? You take a shower. Well, sometimes you don't if you're really in a rush, but whatever. <laughs> Get dressed. Or if it's cold, well, right? When it's cold, right? Yeah. Or, you know, like if you, 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 you go into the meeting, you have to get dressed. You have to make sure that you're groomed. You may not take a shower, but if you don't sink, that's fine. You know, but anyway, you got, you got my point. You have to yeah. prepare for it. In the same way that, you know, imagine if you're, you're going to a meeting, and you, you didn't prepare, you won't feel confident, right? I mean, exactly. you have to do your pre-work. And that really increases your confidence as well because you know you've done your job. But at the same time, be open to questions and suggestions and comments. Yeah. Because again, if you if you think that, oh my gosh, I've got all, all of this is like, totally do this. Yeah, I mean, it's good to believe in yourself. But then if you think that you've got everything under control and nothing can escape you because you're super awesome, then that is crossing over to overconfidence already. <laughs> yeah. So be sure that you 
work hard and prepare and practice, but at the same time, be open. I think it's yeah. really important. Okay, let me note that down. Be open. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so uh, one of my brothers in Christ has a question for you. So, Kel Garbe. So, what can you suggest to someone who is lacking confidence? Do you want me to answer this, or do you want to answer it? You, you yes. answer it first. Okay. I think. Well, Cal, thank you for asking. Uh, I think some of the tips that we've covered so far is one to to do the power poses that uh, was suggested by Amy Cuddy. It's really, really worth it. I would tell you, it yeah. really helps. It's. You can also go back to the Marissa Peer video and ask yourself, what is behind me lacking confidence? Is it me not feel? Maybe it's a particular area in your life. Maybe you lack yeah. confidence in your, your job because yeah. you've only been, been there for a few weeks and you don't feel like you know the job very well. Again, it's case to case. Is it that you feel you lack confidence when it comes to asking people out. Maybe you just need to work on your skill and doing small talk. Maybe you just need to practice your charisma. I, I don't know. I mean, again, what is, get, go back to, so number one, I would really recommend that you do the power pose. Number two, go back to what are you not feeling confident about? And then we can, work on concrete steps and how to help you increase confidence in that particular area. Now, I know people who do not feel confident about themselves, period. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm ugly, I'm, I'm not good at anything. Now, it's still an area where you can ask yourself why. You know, keep going back to why, why, why. There is a framework called the five whys. It helps yeah. you get to the bottom of things, and you can try that out. If you say, I'm ugly, why? Oh, I, my, my, my skin is horrible. It just keeps breaking out all the time. Why? You know, just keep asking why, and that will help you get to the root of the problem, and that will help you resolve the issue. Mm -hmm. So you can try that out. You can also, as we've been mentioning, you can practice can get feedback or seek feedback from other people because, sorry, okay, let me take a step back. You can practice because it will increase your confidence and your ability in certain things. You can seek feedback from other people because that will also give you an idea of what you can work on in terms of yourself. And remember to also surround yourself with people who love you and support you. Because I think that a lot of times we take for granted the people who love and support us. And unfortunately, you know, we surround ourselves with people who might not be really good for us and people who bring us down. And it, it takes time, you know, to, to sometimes realize these things. I, I gained greater awareness about these things when I became a solopreneur and I was doing everything because it became more especially, well, it became more important to me to really value the time that I was spending outside of work. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes for me right now, the less time that I spend on working on a particular project or proposal, that directly equates to my income. Yeah. And if you look at it that way, I mean, these are major losses that I could get from spending time with people or certain people. So it really makes you question the kind of company that you keep and the people that you work with because you don't, sometimes you don't really realize it when you're an employee, but when you're a solo thing, you appreciate it more. And I'm telling this to you because, or I'm sharing this with you, because whether or not you're an entrepreneur or you're an employee, you should realize that whatever time you spend with one person sacrifices the time that you spend doing other things or spending time with other people. So that's why it's especially important to also choose the company that you keep. Don't waste your time on people who bring you down who make you feel bad about yourself, spend it with time, spend the time with people who love you and support you. Yeah, I love it. Of course, because... there are many other tips, but you know, I'm sure Colas also has stuff to add as well. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I love it when when you said time, uh, you know, spend time with people who who matters, right? Because uh, I can't stress this enough to my clients, to the people that I talk to, that time is the, your most valuable resource, right? Time can be, you know, uh, equivalent to money. Time can be equivalent to love and affection, right? So make use of your time really, really, really well because, you know, spending it with people whom, whom you know you can get anything from, uh, then it's not worth it. Yeah, I love that. So, yeah, so, 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 the question, let me see, what can you suggest to someone who is lacking confidence? Again, I, I'll give you the three tips that I, I just gave you. Plus, you know, I, I, I can stress this enough as well that, you know, you have to believe in yourself first, right? Because once you start believing in yourself, uh, that's that's where the magic happens, right? Um, you, can, you can never be confident if you don't believe in yourself, right? Or or if you can, you can fake it till you make it, right? But then that, that's temporary. Right, so you really have to genuinely believe in yourself for you to be able to be confident, and all all else will follow. Yeah. Oh, so Argel here. Uh, so that's that's it. Kel, I hope we answered your question. Right. Um, Argel. Argel is saying agree. Environment affects behavior. You were talking about this earlier, right, Doreen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is so true. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so uh, guys, if you don't have any more questions or if you have further questions after this uh, webinar, right, uh, you can reach me at mnangelis at moveforwardandup.com. So Doreen, uh, you can re can you repeat your, your email again? I believe it's Doreen sure. Cooper, ph at gmail.com, right? Or ph. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if you have questions. Okay. At gmail. But they can oh. they can also reach me on my uh, public page on Facebook. That's www.facebook.com slash Doreen Cooper dot net. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can also send me messages there. And as you know, I do everything. So you're sure that I, I'm going to be the one replying to you, whether it's email <laughs> or Facebook or yeah. on my website where you can leave comments. It's hard being a solopreneur, huh? It's not easy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. If you see my planner, another <laughs> ending list. And, it's so crazy. and I, I can imagine how how organized you are because I don't even have a planner, right? <laughs> oh wow, really? Oh. Yeah, but I do. I, I do hope, love. I, I do so love my my calendar, right? My calendar is full, but I don't have you know. I don't like writing. I, I like everything online. Yeah. Uh, so, do you remember Marvin? He is part of the the band that uh, recorded for you, so he is watching us. Hi, so he said, <laughs> "It's a great discussion. Thanks, Doreen and Pulas. Yeah, so he is the guitarist, and we did your your recording. Okay, so I would like to thank everyone who stayed with us all throughout the call. I will be posting the replay on this page, and if you do have more questions, we gave you you our email. Uh, you can also visit our pages." Uh, I will be putting it on the description in this post. So Doreen, thank you very much for joining me in this webinar. Is there anything you want to promote? Anything I want to promote? Yeah. Uh, actually, there are a couple of things. Now that I think about it, I was thinking about ahead. it earlier on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so first and foremost, I'd really like you to in, uh, I'd really like to invite you to follow my Facebook page. That's triple w dot facebook.com slash net. I will also be putting up a mailing list on my website in the coming week or I think next week or the week after. So please check that out because I will be sharing, well, straight to your mailbox, any useful tips or, you know, just tips and tricks that could help you in, in, empower yourself in terms of life or career or whatever it might be. My website is doreencooper.net. It's so basically my Facebook page is just you know an extended version of my yeah. my website. And yeah, I mean on on those different platforms, you'll be able to to see uh, my blog. I come out with an episode every week. It's just one and a half to two minutes long. It's very quick, easy, easy to share as well. Very shareable and yeah. I, I hope that you can also engage with me in the different discussions on my, my blog. I mean, also once a month, I do book talks on my yeah. Facebook page live. Yeah, so I, I really hope that you guys can, can join the discussions on my page, on my website. 
And I do have, as I mentioned, a book coming out. It's coming out in September. I'm planning my book launch. And as you know, as a solopreneur, I'm doing everything. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. It's like, okay, today I have two hours to go to the printer. Tomorrow I have two hours to work on my launch. It's 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 really funny. Are you self publishing? What? Sorry. Yeah, I'm self publishing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's hard. And uh, yeah, so we do everything, including the launch and. Yeah, I'm driving myself nuts over my launch, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it's a wonderful learning process. I have to say, it it puts you in debt to the amount of expenses. Publishing a book is so expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Launching it is a whole different story. But I'm very, very excited about my book. Not for myself, actually, because in terms of being able to do it, I'm I'm okay. I, I'm it's all with the printer. It's just a matter of waiting for it to come out. But what I'm most excited about is to get it into your hands and give you the chance to, to go through it and read it and learn from it. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of workshops, as I mentioned to you, and my book is an extension of that because there are quite a number of people who reach out to me and ask if I can do one-on-one -on -one workshops, but I can't. I, I just can't. Realistically, yeah. it's very difficult to do that. So my book has a lot of different ideas, but at the same time, it also has sort of like workbook spaces, which give you the chance to apply all of the ideas that I share with you in the book. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited to, to put it out there in the coming weeks and announcements on how you can get your hands on a copy will be on my my Facebook page and on my website, I will be shipping to anywhere around the world. I know, <laughs> I know, I'm so excited about that. I'm shipping everywhere. And uh, if you want the copy to be signed, just let me know, send me a message to, you know, like whom you want it to be signed for. It's perfect for Christmas presents and yes. stuff. So yeah, I really hope that you guys could support that too. I would really appreciate that. Now I have my Christmas presents for, you know, <laughs> do a little thing, right? Yay. Thank you for the suggestion, <laughs> right? Yeah, and um, anything else you want to promote? I think I already said a lot of stuff to promote. It's your chance now. Okay. <laughs> it, it's okay. I mean, oh yeah, definitely watch uh, Doreen's uh, vlogs, right? It's really just short, you know, millennials like it short, right? And uh, I think that's a good, uh, that's a good content for you to be watching, especially if you're on the move or you're just, you know, just sitting down and trying to relax, just watch Doreen's videos. And I guess you are also the one, you know, shooting it, editing it, writing the content and everything because you're a solopreneur, right? Yes, I do everything. Yeah. It, so that's in all, in all fairness, we have a helper here at home who presses the record button for me. Okay. So I, I, I do the framing and everything, and then she presses the record button and stops it. Okay, okay, so you have help, yeah. So you can imagine that's a lot of, you know, uh, love in, in, in every content that, that Doreen, you know, uh, just publishes. So just, just, you know, support, support her, especially you are in the Philippines, you are lucky to be there because, you know, you, you can get a hold of Doreen. Right, easier than me getting a hold of Doreen if I'm here in, in Canada, right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, so I would like to plug that I'm launching the beta of my intensive coaching program and I'm only taking in five people until end of August for this beta launch. I already have three people who signed up, so there's just two more slots left. So the main goal of this program is to unlock one's best self so that they can live the life that they truly want by achieving clarity, challenging status quo, gaining confidence, Gaining confidence and taking actions. So being content with being contented is passive life striving. So are you a passive life striver, right? Most millennials that I know are passive life strivers. In fact, four out of five millennial clients that I have said that they are just going with the flow in their lives. They think that they are contented, but deep inside, they feel they can do more. They can be more, right? So what if you can take on life proactively rather than just going with the flow? Do what you are supposed to do and unlock your best self so that you can feel fulfilled and successful. And you can say you're living the life that you really want. So my program is geared towards achieving the life that you really want to understand where you are, where you want to be, 
na identify the steps and the proper mindset to achieve it. The biggest cost of investment will be really low and it will never be this low again once I launch it fully. So if you are interested, schedule a discovery session with me by sending me a Facebook message, posting a, a comment on, on this uh, webinar or posting a message on, on my Facebook page or even my personal page which you can reach me, right? So, uh, so as promised, as a reward for staying with us until the end of the call, here's the code. The code is unlocked now. Again, it's unlock now, U-N-L-O-C-K-N-O-W. Again, with the code, you can get in the program at 80% less the full launch price. So that means you're just paying 20%, right, for the beta launch. So any final thoughts, Dream? Uh, I'm good. Uh, I, I just wanted to say thank you to you again and to everyone who stayed with us. Thank you so much. I hope that in our own little way, we were able to help you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Yeah, so thank you very much, Doreen, for, for staying. I know uh, we were late for about an hour, but you still you stayed. So I got in a hold of you for about two hours. And you know, as we were talking about time, time is the most valuable resource. And you know, that time is something that we cannot take back. But I do appreciate it. I do appreciate you being with us here and just sharing your piece of advice, sharing your piece of you know uh, experience with confidence. And I believe all the people that will be watching this will learn a lot from you. Thank you. As I think they'll also learn a lot from you. Thank you very yeah. much. And that's that's what make will make us happy, right? I mean, yeah. uh, the world needs people who who just want to share. And I hope we were able to share with you what what we have. Okay, so this is my final thought for this webinar. Confidence is always there. You can build it and you can work on it. All you have to do is to believe. So Doreen, thank you again for joining me today. Filipinas, have a good night. Canada, have a good rest of the day and see you in our next episode of the How Much Do You Really Need series next month. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.